as you notice, the rap boy was saying, yes, Dr. Ben is right halfway, but and this other way, he isn't right. That the Jews were not, that Judaism didn't come out of Africa. Then he turns around and say, well, yes, there was the time with Abraham, as he said, that the Jews were there. And I said, for 400 years, Moses and all of them were, they became, if they were, and there never was anything, they, they became what they were supposed to be while in Egypt, and they all were born there, in, except uh, Abraham and, and Joseph and the few other uh, people there. We have a habit of supporting popular situation rather than correct situation. If the thing has the popularity of the time, we support it. And anyone who dares to challenge it, we do not ask the challenger, do you have facts? And then examine the facts that the challenger put forward, but we reject the challenger solely because the persons in view is popular. This week, uh, last weekend, we had a popular uh, situation of buying clothes. Uh, regardless of what the quality of clothes was, we were out there demonstrating for an affair that never took place. We were out there talking about Osiris, his son, I'm using the Western term, his son Horus, and Osiris' wife and Horus' mother, Isis. We were celebrating, first we were mourning the death of the son and celebrating the resurrection of the father. We were celebrating the resurrection of a penis, a hard-on, and don't know it. When we spoke of Jesus' resurrection, we do not know that we were speaking about Osiris receiving back his penis which had been cut up, cut off and thrown in the river Nile and eaten by a Nile catfish with it returned because this most faithful of African women as most Africans are and most African men cannot I mean most African women are and most African men cannot understand it because their masters have already told us that black women are no good, and so we don't marry a, uh, much many of them, especially when we could throw a baseball or a football or some of their ball. <laughs> now, we, we do not examine, as I said before, and so the big fiasco went on, and had we known that the resurrection meant when ISIS appealed to God Ra to give back her husband, his manhood, so that he can again secure for the world a good God because he has, I, was murdered by his brother, the bad God, which you call a devil, said Typhon. And so God had given him back his penis, but the penis was given back as a dead penis lying straight horizontally. And it is the resurrection of the penis so that Isis, could come and lay on the pyramids and become impregnated by immaculate conception. And we carry this away. We listen to our slave master telling us that this came from Rome. I don't know how you can deal with the immaculate conception from Rome, a faggot, and then, and then speak of it as if it had anything to do with Europe. But then I do know why you can do that because when I look in your Bible, and I look in your home, even in your toilet, and see the person you have up there, it's the same man that whip your ass every day, the slave master. I mean, whip you, whip your daddy, whip your mommy, and I know some of you are already, especially some of you are new, are already uh, sad. You said, God, what I have come into. <laughs> well, you're coming to the truth for a change. And, Had you, had you been to Egypt, if not with me, but at least been to a place called Dendera, another place called Abydos, 
immediately you would know what I am speaking is the truth because you would have seen the story of Isis and Horus. You would have immediately, when you saw this picture, because you may not have gone with me before my discussion with, excuse me, with the rabbi, Rabbi Seltzer, but I have seen that video again, you would then have known that Rabbi Salsa himself may not have gone to uh, Abydos and Denra. Or if he had gone to Abydos and Den Denra, because of his interest had to protect the position he took. Remember that Rabbi Salsa not only represented the ADL at that time, but Rabbi Salsa was the president of the local Great Neck NWCP and the local Urban League. He was the multi-genius of Great Neck. <laughs> and he had to say, he had to protect because those of you who are Christian, Jews, and Muslims, Rabbi Salsa was defending you. He was defending you because you have endorsed what he stated and what he stood for. Because whether or not you call yourself Jews or Muslim or Christian, you are tied to the Adam and Eve syndrome, which has nothing to do with life in fact. Had you, had you gone at any time to Egypt, you would have known that number one, the entire Nile Valley civilization preceded Adam and Eve by thousands of years. There was no mention of Adam and Eve anywhere in the world. Since it is the Jews, or Hebrews, or Haribo, any of those names you want to use, since it is that they are the ones that gave you the concept of an Adam and Eve, if of a beginning of the world starting with a God by the name of Jehovah, you would have known that it could not have been a fact because there isn't a single Jew alive before Abraham. Abraham is said in your Bible, in your Torah, in your uh, 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 Quran, to have been the first of the Jews born in the city of Ur in Chaldea. Now the rabbi had to make a double up and that because he said, they were Mesopotamian. They didn't know thing about the, them being Mesopotamian. It said he was born in the city of Ur, that's what the Bible said, in the nation of Chaldea, and at Chaldea, they admitted, as the rabbi did, was at the time controlled by African people. The same African people, by the way, who had traveled from the Nile Valley all the way, you're going to hear it next week, all the way to India and established the first uh, 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 statutory rules and sacred laws of the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Indian book. The, the people you call Dravidians or Tumul or Dalit. Either name, when I had been saying that for umpteen uh, years gone back, way in the 30s, I was accused then of trying to be Indian. I, I, it's the last thing I want to be. I'm so I'm I'm very happy being an African. So if, if obviously no one knew me much, it's just like people trying to say that I marry uh, uh, a white woman in Egypt. I know the person who said that doesn't know me very well. So I kind of ignored that. But for some of you that I consider of human being, I felt it's necessary to remind you that it is still me, and I haven't gone crazy yet. Now, there is a, a, another factor that this title today presupposes. The philosophical ethnical masterpiece. A week or so or more, in the Wall Street Journal, I'm getting in high places in America, this professor sat there. She teaches classic. And because I said the Greek were not classical, Therefore, they can't teach classics. The only thing classical about the Greeks 
were the classical faggots. And that's the own thing, especially for most of you who are members of the upper dapper, lapper, kappa, dapper, pepper. <laughs> you, I know that I'm hurting a lot of your feelings, but I generally do that, so don't feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad until I tell you what the whole story is, then you know that you're real upper dapper, lapper. Because until I get, I could speak all afternoon, and I should not have mentioned even the word Greek. I could speak for two more weeks and don't reach the Greeks because they're not around yet. That goes for the Romans too. I could speak another two weeks and don't reach Adam or Eve and will be still speaking what the Africans did. So when the rabbi admitted that yes, some aspect of Judaism did start in Africa. What do you mean by some? Some is more than three. <laughs> and if I got ten, some, and, you, and you're talking about three, it's not the half. What I'm saying, that the little percentage that didn't come from Africa in Judaism doesn't make up two percent of a hundred. I am saying that if my mother gave birth to me, certainly my mother gave birth to me to a certain orifice, which all of you come out, not my mother, but somebody, some mother, every one of you come to it. The mere fact that I go back into an orifice doesn't make that other woman my mother. The mere fact then that Judas come through the orifice of Africa and then went to Asia to go into the orifice don't mean that Judaism is an Asian reli uh, African religion. And I want to make it clear for those of you who are Jewish, you said Ben Yekin and say that Ju Judaism is Jewish. No, Judaism is a, far, is a fraud just like Christianity and Islam. It's a fraud because it does not recognize its mother. And any child that disrespect its mother by declaring she is not his or her mother is a fraud. If Judaism could say that any one of its prime members and the first member of Judaism is Avram, is the first of all Jews. If they could say that Adam, Ad Abram knew anything and wrote anything, published anything, taught anything that was contrary or before or different to what the ancient Africans of the Nile Valley was teaching, then I'm willing to succumb and say, yes, it is valid. It's a religion all by its own and started on its own. It started in Asia as an Asiatic black man's organization. You listen to Asiatic black men, because listen to it very carefully. There's a lot of jive going down by a crazy man who following another crazy man who is dead that's saying that I, when I die, I'm going to come back white. And I'm going to get straight here. And I'm going to have a narrow nose. And I'm going to have thin lips. If God, if there's a God and does that to me, we're going to have a fight. <laughs> Now, he probably wants to be that way because he's no different than Michael Jackson in his thinking. Now, let me get it straight now. Let me get it down here. <laughs> if anyone plus the rabbi can show me any Jewish writing before that attributed to a man that said born in the city of Goshen, in Egypt, and as I remind you, each time I go to Egypt, I make sure that it hasn't gone anywhere, that it is still in Africa, because the day it leaves and goes somewhere else, I'm not going there. Now, now, it is a fact then that we see that the first piece of writing attributed to the Hebrews is a book called Exodus, not even Genesis. Because Genesis, and the rabbi had to admit, is an afterthought. The four books of the Torah was written before Rabbi Hagrippa and Rabbi Hillel finally found out 
that quote, we talk about leaving Egypt and we're not in the world yet. <laughs> so that the Council of Jamia they decide to write a book called Genesis, the word meaning beginning. And so they had to find a chumped up beginning and based it upon some craziness, and therefore we have adopted it. Oh, look, am I, I taking a Sunday to mess up with you and your religion? <laughs> now, but I'm going to do it, continue. See, you're going to leave before I leave. Now. <laughs> you see, the truth got a funny way to rob you, and it rob you the bad way, because I, most of you women in here, if I say, that the Bible is garbage, you get mad. But I will prove it with, with one other thing. The Bible got you as the one who started sin. Eve caused sin for the forbidden fruit. Now you know, most of you believe it. Most of you believe that Eve start, and if she didn't start it, she cooperated with Adam. And most of you believe that's why you have pain, those of you who are mothers, get them, go back to your child. You know why you believe it? You're stupid. <laughs> and why you're stupid? You see the baby when it's in your hand. Now you notice that the baby got a head at least five inch diameter. <laughs> and you know you got your vagina isn't five inch. Otherwise you need a camel or an elephant. <laughs> so now you know that the reason you have pain giving birth is the head. And you know when you look at that shoulder, and that's 11 to 12 inches, you know that if your vagina was at least 5, it ain't 12. <laughs> now you know definitely why you got the pain. It got nothing to do with any sin. You, you, do, you, do you see my logic there? I'm trying to reason with you in everywhere possible that you could understand the truth I'm dealing with. Now you may hear something else from the minister, from the rabbi, from the imam, different to that Friday, Saturday, and today. But you notice that they don't discuss anything, that they don't break down anything to you, because if they break it down, if they give you dates, you're not going back next Friday, next Saturday, next Sunday, and that sucker ain't going to have no money. Now, you understand, I had to stop to break that down to you because you may like me in one way, but now when I'm coming close to your Jesus, or, you know what I mean, or your Allah, or your Jehovah, now I'm messing with you. I plan to mess with you because I want you to get straight. All right, now, when the rabbi as others talk and when we see here the philosophical and ethical masterpiece, we must understand the philosophical, and everybody ha must deal with philosophy. Any group of people are together because of philosophical reasons. You don't have to write it down in a book. It's automatic that if a group of people stay together, there is a philosophical basis for their being together. It's equally a uh, 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 given that they are there are ethical reasons, or at least an ethical reason, for their being together. They set up a set of morals, and that moral set of morals become a code. And each person is expected to behave according to, <coughs> excuse me, his position or her position within that compact of people. Now, no one can deny this. Thus, when, it, when I said that is a lie that the Greeks were the first to deal with philosophy, it didn't need any great thinker to come up with a conclusion. Since the Greeks were not the first people in the world that we know of, then they living together philosophically could not have been the first. And therefore their writing about it could not have been the first philosophical concept when the ancient people along the Nile, Ethiopian, Egyptians, uh, the people of Tamari, let's call them by the modern na name, the Sudan, Sudanese, and, and different thing, Uganda, because that's the beginning of the Nile, is in Uganda and Ethiopia. Those people had already written, and written in terms of their theosophical beliefs and philosophical beliefs. We can go back to the Twa, 
uh, and, it, and the Hutu people, the smallest people on the face of the earth, and we could see them presenting long before writing as we know it, going back into the ant uh, archaeological forms, we could see the Twa and Hutu people, and more so not only in the centroid part of East Africa, but we saw them and still see them at the southern tip of Africa, which they themselves call at one time Munumutapa, before we are now hearing Azania and um, uh, uh, Azania and the next name. Um, uh, uh, uh? No, 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 the southern tip, they, they divide. Azania and... Uh, no, no, they don't know the name. Northwest Namibia. I, I still don't call them that because they have uh, African people have changed the name from Monomotapa because the white folks said that the Monomotwepe, the ruler of Monomotapa, was a bad man and he had killed the missionaries. He was a good man. <laughs> and the name should go back to remind young Africans of that part of the world one of the obligations they have and one of the obligations they have is to learn how to kill white folks. It is equally your obligation, because one day you're going to have to do it. I, I heard you are now satisfied that half of the beaters have been convicted. So at least we got half of justice. So Rodney King will get a few million dollars which he's unable to spend because he's like a jellyfish, uh, talking about we, n we have to come together. <laughs> and now we are all entrepreneurs, so we don't mind about a Rodney King. And everybody was worried if the brothers are going to challenge the police and open arms since the police have shown the amount of military hardware they have in hand. If they were found innocent, do you, I, excuse me, I don't think the brothers in California were stupid enough to attack the police in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is not the only city in California. You attack any place where the cracker was and is. Maybe the White House. It doesn't matter. A cracker is a cracker is a peck of <laughs> Now let me go on again. Because some of you may believe that an Egyptologist should not think as I do. That all I should be talking about Egypt. But I, I have to bring in, you see, the, the reason I am an Egyptologist is because I know the past and I know how it affects the present. Now, let's continue. Rabbi Seltzer, and he has since been banished out of Great Neck, having been mistreated by Yosef Ben Johan. <laughs> Robert Seltzer had failed to recognize that the foundation of Judaism, which is the foundation of Christianity, which is the foundation of Islam, because that's the manner in which these three religion, and you could call it what you want, started. First, there was an Abraham, then there was a Jesus, the Christ created by Pantheus and Boethius, and then there was a Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, who dealt with this term God in the Arabic language, and that uh, language uh, uh, is no different than any language. Whether you call the deity in Arabic Allah, or you call the deity God, or you call the deity Dio, it still means the deity, the male form of the deity. Of course, it is a problem by which Abraham and all of them had. It seems as if that the Hebrews or Jews, whatever name we want to call them, had gotten afraid of their women, as they did with the Adam and Eve story. And they finally they decided to deny their mama the proper place she 
held in world reality. She had given birth to the bastards and should have turned her foot when they were coming out and snapped their neck. But like most women, they were being kind and allowed these monsters to grow up to the point of writing a book and taking her out of it. So the Jews could not deal with a goddess any longer because they couldn't deal with their mama, much less their woman that they were sleeping with. So they had to remove the woman out of the picture, and she could no longer be a, the deity. In the case of the Christian, uh, the, the, uh, the Christian male could not deal with the woman either. So therefore, Jesus' mother, who was the mother of God according to the Christians, had to be removed from her position of goddess. The Christian man, who had lost his testicles and everything else, and if he had it, wasn't functioning properly. And therefore, the woman must shame them by performing, and he couldn't respond. And therefore, it was necessary at the Nicene Conference to remove Mary from an honored position that they had copied in terms of Isis. Isis had fulfilled her sexual obligation to Osiris. She had given Osiris sex to the point of a child. But what had happened after Osiris was killed by this evil brother, Typhon? Isis found herself unable to produce a child with a dead man. This is the situation with most of our Christian folks because many of us are having sexual intercourse with the Lord. As a matter of fact, all the nuns are married to the Lord, Jesus. Of course, uh, after he's failed, they come to me and... <laughs> Thank you. Oh, someone a billion. Do what the Lord cannot do. Because the Lord did not do it on earth, you all said. At 33, I mean, that's stop reason with this thing. At 33 years of age, you said that a man come down in a polygamous country where everybody having an extra wife or 10 or 5 or 50 or more and that man didn't touch anybody at all that he went to a big wedding and saw the people having a fun and he sat up there make sneaky feet, why you call it and had a good time when everybody was grabbing on some woman he was right there just watching and every time you see him we were 12 men now it's up for you to draw your own conclusion and not blame me for this. You've got to do, use your reasoning. Ask, if you had asked to see at least one of the 18 books that were taken out of your Bible, then you would understand that that was a lie. That J.C. was going to bed with Martha. J.C. had thrown a little boy off the roof. Because you would have written, you would have read the 18 books and you would have read the Aquarian Gospel. And you would have seen the other side of the life of Jesus that your minister and rabbi, I, I mean, and, 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 and uh, what a prophet or whatever they call themselves, had denied you. You would have seen that he acted as a normal man. He acted as a Norman man in the synagogue when he whipped asses one day, overshot change in the money box. You would have seen that, but you can't see it. You're still mad. I could look in some of your face. You, you're paining. You're hurting. You're hurting because I'm talking about a man that had sex with that woman as your man have with you, if he's much of a man. Now, but you can't have that. Because since sex is sexual, you can't have Jesus getting laid. Because you know sex is bad. Because your sex is messed up. You believe everybody's sex is messed up. So Jesse couldn't have had sex. Yet God made the penis and the vagina. You know, if God, if, if sex is bad, God is responsible for it. He made Adam with clay and whatnot. And he attached a penis. To Adam, obviously, it was at least half Adam he made before he put the penis on. 
because you got to get either when he come down or go up at midsection he slap the penis in there <laughs> in the case of Eve he must have done it the same way even though he took the flesh from Adam at Robert Adam's rib cage I mean you know you get mad you get mad but am I correct am my reason is my reason reasoning logical is your belief logical I mean look at yourself you don't have to take off your clothes now just think back this morning how you look and see if I'm not describing the way you look right all right I mean then you know I'm right but you can't say I'm right because the cracker wrote a book and put it in your hand with all kind of pictures and you know it was you in the picture because you know you white <laughs> Now, understanding this clearly, we have to understand and don't fail because when I went up here to Michigan the other night, I spoke for two fraternities and a sorority joined with another group to sponsor me. And I told them when I got there, I said, I'm very, very happy that you all brought me, but you all don't go for you good about me when I leave. <laughs> Because I have to talk with you and them Greeks and them freaks. <laughs> because the, the truth isn't varied by virtue of the money in the collection plate. The truth is the truth irrespective of who sponsored me. And you're going to hear it. And then I told them this, I was brought there to speak, listen to it, a conference of black male on white campuses and the conference had at least 30 percent crackers so I asked them what are these crackers doing in here <laughs> this is a conference for black males on white campuses and I see all of these cracker women I said are, are these your women I mean I mean I, I don't know I'm asking I didn't say the word and, and asked uh, which one are you white women going with this with black man in here that Put a little chill in the community because <laughs> a, a few of them didn't want to know who they were going with, so they uh, w couldn't deal with it. But anyhow, one the thing that happened to people is that we are accustomed to all of these frauds, and when the fraud hit us on our head, we cannot make the change, and we condemn the person who comes to us and say, "Here." There's a fire. See the smoke? It didn't, the smoke didn't come by itself. The smoke is coming from a fire. Let us search for the fire. And you who are dealing with the smoke said, no, it is smoke, but no fire. This is a special smoke. It comes from a white man. And if a white man said there's no fire, even though there's smoke, it there ain't no fire. I came to you to explain that the reason we can be lulled to sleep with a half decision in the Rodney King case is no difference than we can lull to be lulled to sleep Friday at the mosque, Saturday at the synagogue, and Sunday at church. Because we got a half of the truth, a half of the truth that started in Africa. And the reason is that we are not willing to deal with the truth. For those of us who see brothers and sisters, whether from Haiti or, or from the west coast of Africa, practicing the worship of God, Vudum, have difficulty even respecting the, 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 the religion, Vudu. We have followed, and any comedian goes on the radio, could make joke about Vudu and Vudum. And there's no objection to us. Nobody writes in to the, to the editor, to the or to the anybody. But let somebody come and make joke about Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Allah, and Jehovah, and you will send a ton of letters overnight. The fact is, if I said Jesus, Allah, and so forth, I heard no grimaces, but let me say Unkulunkulu, the God of the Amazulu. Let me say Ngai, the God of the people of the Agukuyu of Kenya and so on and so on. It gener it gener but even let me say 
Other than that, let me say that the ginkgo tree is God. And immediately you got a word for me. I'm an ominous. Now I don't know what that what you mean by that, and I don't think you know what you mean either. But what do you mean? What's wrong about being an animus? Because I go to the tree, I wish to cut down the tree as a firewood or to make a bed for my children or myself to lay on. And so I get there and say to the tree, while watching the beautiful leaves uh, uh, toss it in the, in the breeze, uh, and I say to the tree, tree, I have to speak to you and ask you permission to cut you down uh, because I'm sorry, I realize that you're alive. How in the world I live in, I must use you. You are related to me, yes, we're in the same world, but my interrelationship with you, I have to use you in this manner in order to sleep. I will not cut you down just to put you in my living room to show my friends. I will do as some people do, big, the big hunter who comes to Kenya and with a telescopic lens 500 miles away almost, <laughs> kill the lion and is a big hero. Uh, he doesn't take the knife and go with his mouth and then grab the lion, give the lion a fair chance and then, <laughs> and, and then kill. But now I, I'm talking to the tree and I'm saying to the tree the reason and you get there and say, look at that stupid man. He's talking to a tree. Well, I'm talking to a tree that thinks better than you do. So your Bible said he looked like a man, but he walked like a tree. That's what you tell you. But does it, is it, does, is it a literal fact? Or is he saying that the man, my, looked like a man, but I walk like a tree. I don't move. I shake. I roll. I move. But still, I'm steady. My both, both feet are standing at earth at the same place. In our case, we are moving, but we are worse than the tree. We are worse than the tree because now we are talking about ecology. But your African ancestor, by talking to the tree, had his built-in ecology. Because he didn't cut down any tree for any frivolous reason. He cut down a tree only when it was basic to his livelihood. And there we come to the concept here of what's ethical, what's philosophical, philosophical in the origin. The origin of taking cognition of what we have as an African people and not losing it. I know this book of uh, uh, Dr. Blyden has been reprinted outside there and I'm glad for the person who brought it back. But then we, let us go back to Blyden since we brought the book and see Blyden, Blyden spoke of this in another perspective. Blyden spoke of this in terms that we can't deal with it. We speak of our women in terms of a Christian background morality, a Muslim background morality, a Hebrew background morality. We do not treat our women in an African, regardless of what country or what culture, from Africa, background. That's one of the reasons for our plight, our struggle with our woman. She becomes a counterpart. We speak of our relationship between men and women as if two soldiers on the battlefield. I went and I asked these young, young people up at Michigan, the next time you invite me, please invite me to a conference of black women and black men. I'm tired of going to conferences of black women complaining about black men and black men complaining about black women. The reason you gotta complain is because you can look at yourself. The night I went there, the first night, after the afternoon conference, they had a dance. I wasn't surprised. So they're going to forget everything they had during the day. But at the dance, I went there to look and see if black women are holding black men 
Oh, and black men are holding black women. And I stood there, and the young man, or the young woman, comes in front, they are, are gonna get up from here this time. He comes, and there's a girl standing there, and he stopped, he made like this. She got up, and he made like this. And she doing the same thing. Never once did they touch each other. Never once. And then, being in the subway to show you how bad things are going, I was in the subway. Uh, I had enough courage to go down there. <laughs> Keeping my hand in my pocket was bluffing somebody that I had <laughs> something. Because when I call the subway, I always do this. For, and then look mean for the brother figure, don't mess with him. <laughs> But in the subway, I heard a young man, very nice, handsome looking young man, hollow to a very beautiful young lady, hey bitch, come here. And the young lady came, what you want, baby? And he said, bitch, and I tell you. So I stood there. I thought he was speaking to a bitch, so I'm looking for the bitch. <laughs> And I didn't see any female dogs. I know you're not supposed to have a dog unleashed or not unleashed in the subway. And then I, I wonder, how could he be speaking that kind of English to a dog? But when I realized this, this young lady responding, I said, oh, she's a bitch. Oh, she don't have four legs. So I couldn't withstand it and when I asked the young lady, did you hear what he called that other girl? He called her his bitch. And she said, yeah, that's his bitch. <laughs> and, I, and I said, Do you, are you a bitch for somebody else? She said, yeah, I got me. <laughs> yeah. So I said, I, I said, I, I couldn't think. So I called up one of my granddaughters because I want to get this thing together. I know I'm getting to be a fossil. I'm getting rather old. And I, and I said, Tracy, are you a bitch? She said, granddaddy. <laughs> I said, it's a good, uh, I mean, I just asked. He said, how could you ask me such a question? I said, do you respond to a man, a young man calling you a bitch? She said, no, that would be the last time you talked to me. I said, just want to check, I want to check. <laughs> so, and I called a few of them. I called a few of them to find out if this was the general thing. I found out, it was the general, but there were one or two young ladies who had the decency left in them yet to refuse a young man and that will, if a young man ever say to her, they will never speak to him again. But the, the reason all of this happened is because we were given the false premise that we were told in the first place down and in the, in the kind of, to look down on our women so therefore we could call them any name at all we were even told and our daughters are told that a man can't even look at her as a sexual object most women and black women I met today he looking at me like I'm a sex object you damn right <laughs> when I look at you good as you look you look like a sexual object I don't look at no man as, as no subject object. <laughs> Ain't nothing he got that interests me. <laughs> but when I look at you, good as black woman look, you're damn right. My mind is going like a clock. <laughs> you got me, when, you, when I look at you sisters, you get to me. I don't know about these brothers, they may be sick, some, some um, problem, you know, that need a urologist, but... <laughs> But, but uh, even at 73, I get turned on when, when I look at the sisters, and that's any one of you, even if you're with your husband. But I, I, I got a control mechanism, a control mechanism that said, dumb boy, you got to behave yourself. <laughs> but, but I still, you see, anytime you're going out with this sick European woman, that they husband look at them as a piece of furniture, or they go to buy a new dress, and the dress and them, you know, so they come in to tell you, 
and you fell for it, that if the man, a brother look at you good as you look, then he is supposed to see nothing sexual about you. Then why should he talk to you about marriage? You ain't nothing sexual. You want a marriage with a faggot? You want a marriage with a celibate? I mean, then you need to marry. Marry a frankfurter. Just go to, go to the store and order a dozen. No. It, we, you see, I'm, I want to talk to you. And frankly, see, you notice that I'm not going on to all this highfalutin English talk. I'm talking to you basic. Because nobody has spoken to you, obviously, basically. We all come to show you what, how good we did taking our PhD. And, and that PhD is jamming us up, jamming us up everybody else with this uh, uh, and other things. So basically, what this suggests to me, the title today, understanding Alkevinan's original philosophical, eth ethical masterpiece, is a masterpiece that the Africans created our ancestors way back there. If we now had st stand by this masterpiece, I do not mean that we have to go around, get rid of your car, you, don't, you decide to go to the airport walking from here to Newark Airport. I don't mean that jump on, a, on the biggest turkey you saw, see and try to ride it. I don't, I don't mean that. Don't, not even jump on a jackass back and try to go to the airport because the plane going to be in the next place and you ain't going to be at the airport yet. I don't mean that. But I mean the fundamental principles for which our ancient ancestors stand, those fundamental principles we can apply in modern life today. I could be driving a 12-year-old car and still dealing with modern fundamentals. Uh, it is a mistake that we tell our children, and we agree with our children, that we are in two different worlds. And that, that, that we're in, two, you got another thing you call about uh, the, the child is in, uh, something, I forget what you said, but it indicate that the child is at a different life than you. There's the impossible generation gap. If you are living today, and your child is living today. You are in the same generation. You are still in the same world. You are still thinking, and hopefully you are thinking that much as you can advise your child, your grandchild, and gra great grandchildren, and so on. For, for. So it's a myth to tell the child that we are operating in a different generation. If your child is not dressed properly, and some of you trying to outdress your children in ignorance, I mean, some of you are so dressing that I, you're standing up and I see the bottom of your drawers, and, and then you tell me it's the style. Now how in the world, how in the world your teenage daughter is trying to hide herself, and you got your ass showing, I mean, let's say what it is, let's say what it is. And then you come in the subway, if you're standing up and seeing the bottom of your drawers, now you decide to sit down. And I'm a vigorous man, <laughs> sitting on the opposite side, and you can't get your drawers down much as your dress. And I angle myself to see, to get a proper angle that I can see the stuff, because it's cute stuff. And then you watch me and say, I'm a dirty old man. There's nothing dirty about me. I am healthy. It's good stuff to see, and I want to look at it. <laughs> the fact that you got good stuff and don't know you got good stuff is not my fault. I know it's good stuff. I know it needs protection from me. I know you need to build up a curiosity in me to want it. And I know I'm supposed to fight for it. But you're telling me, you need to fight. Here it is. You could touch the shaman anytime you want. <laughs> no, no. We got to say, because I've seen two young ladies right here in front of me. The, we we got to set uh, for the men. The brothers now got pants. The pants are so tight in the behind. The other day, I, I try, I pay, well, under the pair of trousers. And I put, I put on the thing. I said, damn, this feel like a girl. I, I, I haven't had a girl, but I saw my daughters when they were young putting on girdles. That time they used to wear girdles. And, this thing looked just like a garden. I see the sisters, they must grease themselves 
and jump from the roof down to, to, to get at these things. I mean, let us, I mean, we gotta come back to some sanity. If you understand who is designed the clothes down in the garment industry, then you understand that them faggots are trying to, that what they're trying to do is disgrace you. They are putting you in such clothes that your men get disgusted of them so that they could get your men. You understand? You understand? If they make you look like your man, why should the man want you? Ain't got no problem with him. They get sex and he ain't got no expense because he ain't gonna get pregnant, don't care how we try. Therefore, he doesn't. You, you get the picture. Now, <laughs> one has to, we see, we are coming together and dealing with all these philosophical things, but not bringing the, the esoterical part. We're talking about the esoterical. And forget the exoterical, that one isn't separate from the other. It's like me, uh, you know, you be in the street and you get hit by a car and a doctor comes up and he says, oh, she got compound fracture of the leg. But I can't touch her because I'm a heart man. <laughs> no, he been to school, medical school. He learned the entire body. But he decided to specialize on the heart. You mean to tell me he can't deal with a compound fracture. The other day I went to a doctor, I won't call a name, and the man had to give me and take, draw some blood. He had to call his nurse because he hadn't taken blood in a long time. Now I could have died because I need that damn thing. What kind of a doctor has reached to the point that he can't take some blood? He's lost that skill. So it meant, it meant that all he could do is handle a heart. And that's what I mean, is that we have modernized, with quotation marks, ourselves to the point that the ethics, the ethical mastery, the ethics within even medicine. Can you imagine me calling Imhotep and said to Imhotep or his mother or any of the physicians there, or any of the physicians who left us medical treaties going back as far as 2000 before the common era, and say to them, you know, a man is down the street, a woman is down the street. She broke her leg, she has a compound fracture. And he said to me, no, I can't handle her because I only deal with the heart. And talking about the heart, we have to stop dealing with the heart as an abstract. I love you, young ladies. You don't love nobody with your heart. You love with your mind. You understand? Let your mind do the thinking. When you love with your heart, that's when you get in trouble. Because the heart doesn't love. It has no capacity to love. The heart is a muscle, the biggest muscle in your body. And its only function is pumping the blood. That's the only function. It is a myth to say, and I don't care what book it's written in, you love with your heart. No. We must deal with dealing with the reality. You call, brother come to you and act not brotherly. 